Hey y'all! In this video we're going to do an introduction into the texturing toolpath. If you have ever created a sign much like this where you have pocketed out a large area and left raised letters behind, you'll know that oftentimes you'll get machining marks out here around these letters where it's in a very difficult area to sand and clean up. That can be caused by any number of things. Uh, maybe you didn't get your Z0 set 100% perfectly, or possibly the tool that you used to do the detail profile had a different tip geometry than the tool you used out here in your large area clearance. That's more common than you would think. If the geometry is slightly different, maybe this bit that does the detail profile will cut slightly deeper or slightly shallower than this tool out here. One good use of the texturing toolpath is to get in here and add some texture to eliminate those machining marks and add another level of detail to your projects that makes it stand out from the crowd. Let's go ahead over to a new session of Aspire. And again, even though I'm using Aspire version 10, this works identically in vCarve Desktop and vCarve Pro. I'm not going to bore you with my setup here got my job dimensions down here in the corner so you can see this is a pretty large sign so I've got a large area I'm going to be clearing out here. Now we'll need to keep that in mind and because that'll be important a little bit later on. Also over here under create vectors you no doubt know that there is a vector texture tool over here. This is a different tool that's outside of the scope of this video but we will get into this tool at a later date in another video. What we're going to concentrate on in this video is the texturing toolpath itself. So let's go over here to our toolpath tab. Before I even think about texturing, I'm going to need to pocket this out in here. So I'll do a standard pocket toolpath. I'll go ahead and select my border vector and hold down shift and select my text. And I'll come over here to my pocket toolpath. As I've already done this sample image to show you, a lot of my measurements are going to be already in here for me. For instance, I'm going to use a start depth of zero because I want to start at the surface of my material but my cut depth is going to be 100 thousandths, so not quite an eighth of an inch. I want that text to stand proud of the pocket, but not too far. The tool I'm going to be using is an eighth inch end mill, and I'm going to use a larger area clearance tool, in this case a quarter inch end mill, to kind of get out here and clean this up a lot quicker than that eighth inch end mill will do. I'm going to use a raster strategy, and my raster angle is going to be zero. I want that to raster back and forth, left to right, right to left, along my X. Now, the default profile pass setup is, they suggested you use the profile last, meaning it'll hog out all this material out here, then it'll come along and do the profile of my border and around my letters. I prefer to do my profile pass first. I find that with smaller text like this that has these tips that stick out like so, I get a lot less chip out if I do the profile pass first. I'm not going to use a pocket allowance, but I am going to ramp in my plunge moves over a distance of two inches. And we'll go ahead and call this pocket. I'll calculate that tool path and we'll preview those visible toolpaths. With those toolpaths finished, let me rock it back here. 
this is where you're going to get those machining marks. So let's try to eliminate some of those with the texturing toolpath. We'll go ahead and close the preview and I'll go straight over here to the texturing toolpath. Now again, as I've already done this once before, I already have some numbers set in here. But we'll go ahead and start up at the top and I'll walk you through the form. For a tool, I'm going to use a quarter inch ball nose. And my start depth, I have at 100 thou, 0.1. I want that bit to start carving this texture at the surface of this pocket, not the material, the surface of the pocket. Now we'll come down here to the texture settings. Let me start by saying there is no right or wrong number to enter here. This is 100% your call, your choice, your decision. I know that's not a lot of help, but it really is a matter of what looks good to you. We'll go ahead and we'll get some baseline numbers put in here so you have something to gauge this by. We'll start off by saying that all these numbers here, the software makes an attempt to randomize. So you'll see minimums and maximums a lot. Like this right here, we have the maximum cutting depth. This is the deepest the bit is going to cut when it cuts this texture. Right now it's set at 50 thousandths, and that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and leave that there. We also have a minimum depth, which is adjusted with this slider. The minimum depth on this is 22 and a half thou. That's fine as well. What this means is that's the shallowest it's going to cut one of these texture lines, and that's the deepest it's going to cut one of these texture lines. I'm going to go ahead and accept these and just see what it looks at, looks like. We might want to go shallower, we might want to go deeper. But again, the software is going to randomize. But these cuts are going to be no deeper than 50 thou and no shallower than 22 and a half thou. It may be anywhere in between. Here we have the maximum cutting length. It's going to cut for a certain distance then lift out of that cut. Now here we have a maximum length of about an inch and a half. Okay, that's fine. And we have a minimum length of three quarters of an inch. What that means is, again, the software is going to randomize. If the bit plunges down here and starts cutting, it's going to stay in that material cutting before it retracts out and moves on to the next one anywhere from an inch and a half to three quarters of an inch. We've set our maximum length and our minimum length. You can change these to anything. If you want shorter cuts where it looks more like it's been chipped out, then by all means tighten these up. Set this to three quarters and move this slider to one half. I want longer cuts. I want it to look like somebody took a round gouge and took slices out of here. I don't necessarily want them all short. So the longest the cut's going to be is an inch and a half long, and the shortest it's going to be is three quarters of an inch long. Now the maximum overlap. The maximum overlap is how much can one cut overlap with another. We'll get into this a little further when we do the preview, and this will start making a little bit more sense. The step over I have set at an eighth of an inch. The step over is, it'll come in, plunge in, and make a series of cuts along X right here. Then lift up, move over this step over amount, and make another series of cuts. Now I have the step over set at an eighth of an inch, meaning it's going to double cut some of these. More of this will be apparent after we do the preview. I can set this step over to any number I'd like, but I want to keep it less than my end mill diameter, cutting diameter. And the reason for that is because I don't want it to be a line of cuts, then a blank spot, 
then a line of cuts, then a blank spot. I want it to look like somebody came in and carved out this material, not like a machine did it. And there is a variation here. Right now it's set at a little over 31 thousandths, meaning it's going to move over, the bit's going to move over an eighth of an inch, plus or minus 31 thousandths. So it may go more than an eighth of an inch, it may go less than an eighth of an inch, but no more or less than 31 thousandths. Again, my angle is zero degrees. Now down here we have a boundary vector offset. I'm going to go ahead and preview this without a boundary vector offset to show you what this does. We'll go ahead and we'll call this texture. We'll calculate. If we look at the toolpath it generated, this is a very, very busy toolpath, as you can see. If you remember how to read these toolpaths, the light blue lines here are plunge moves. The dark green lines are retract moves. The red lines are rapid moves, where the bit is out of the material. So we see we have a lot of plunges and retracts. That bit is going to be busy. So we'll go back to a straight Z view. And let's preview that texture as it sits right now. And we have a problem. The problem is when calculating a toolpath using a ball nose bit, the software calculates from the center of that bit. So the center of that bit went over to, to this vector, then came over to carve to this vector. When we look at that here, we can see the outline of the vector. This is the radius of the bit. The tip of the bit got to the vector, and the radius of the bit cut into the letter. Let me go ahead and undo last to get rid of that. That's where we need the boundary vector offset. We need that tool to come up close to this vector without actually touching it, without actually carving to the vector, to keep the radius of that bit away from our text. So we need to set a boundary vector offset at the minimum half of our tool's diameter, which is that tool's radius. So we'll set this to 0.125, which is one eighth of an inch, half of my tool diameter, and we'll calculate that toolpath. Now we can see that the toolpath is going to stop short of the vector, and it's not going to cut into that text. So we'll go ahead and preview that now. We see it did leave a clean border around the edge. The center of the bit stayed an eighth of an inch away from that vector boundary, and we did not cut into our letters at all. Now this may or may not work for you and eliminate all of the machining marks. However, it's going to clear up the overwhelming majority of them. The main way to get closer to the letter to eliminate machining marks is to use a smaller bit up here in the toolpath. But there's a trade-off. There's a problem with that. And that problem is machining times. Now let's take a look at this here. See what we have. Right now, that texturing toolpath is going to take almost two hours with my current bit settings right as they are. If I go with a smaller bit, it's probably going to double that because my next smaller bit is an eighth inch bit and all of the step overs are going to be half of this. So it's probably going to double the machining time. So again, when I'm outside cutting on a CNC machine, 
I use Mach 3, which allows me to adjust my feed rate on the fly. That's very low. I don't know why that's set that low. Let me jump up to 50 here. Calculate that. And we'll close it. Then we'll check on. Yeah, that eliminated some machining time right there. But I use Mach 3 as my controller software, meaning I can adjust my feed rate on the fly. And I will not be cutting this at 50 inches per minute. Believe me, I will probably end up cutting it about 120 inches per minute. My point in all of this is texturing toolpath does take time to cut. It's not exactly a 3D carve, but it's very close to it. It's considered a two and a half dimensional cut. So just know that going in. Texture toolpaths add machining time. But let's go back, reset our preview. Shut off our toolpaths, go back to a straight Z view, and let's go back into our texturing toolpath. Now, no doubt, some of you have noticed the save and the load button. If you come up with a texture up here that you like, you can save that texture for later use on other projects. So, the texture that we carved right here looked good. Let's go ahead and save it. So I'll just click the Save button, and it opens up the Vector Textures folder within our Program Data folder on the computer. You can see I already have a few textures saved here. I'm just going to name this one Texture, let's say, Texture 3. That's just something from off the top of my head. And I save that. Now, anytime I want to use that texture on a project, I can go over here to the Load button, and there's Texture 3. I can apply that texture to the, my next project. But for right now, let's go ahead and let's check out one that came with the software. It's called Hand Carved. Now that changed my numbers up here. I've got the 50,000th depth of cut, but it changed my max cut length to 0.8333 and changed the minimum to 0.3083. I've got a max overlap of 30% and a variation of 62%. It kept the step over, and those are the only changes it made. No matter what file you load, what texture you load here, these are the only numbers that are going to be changed. It will not change your bit. It will not change your start depth. It will not change your boundary vector offset. It will only change these numbers here. As I said before, there is no right or wrong numbers for these. You only need to make sure that your bit is capable of cutting these depths. So if you were using something like a sixteenth of an inch bit, you wouldn't want to set these to cut a half inch deep. So normal feed rates, plunge rates, and depth of cut tolerances should be kept. But in my case, with a quarter inch end mill, if I decided I wanted this to cut an eighth of an inch deep, I could set it to do so. I'm not going to do that because I don't think that would look good at all. But my point is here, there really is no right or wrong. You can adjust these to whatever you'd like. Let's say I don't think an eighth of an inch is uh, enough, and I want to add a sixteenth of an inch to that. I'll just hit plus 0 0.0625 equals, and I get 0.1875, which is three sixteenths of an inch. And we'll calculate that. And we'll, uh, since I've reset the preview, I'll need to do my pockets first. So let's uncheck that. We'll check these. And we'll preview those tool paths. That way, I can just undo last when I do my texture. And all it will do is undo the texture. Now we'll preview the texture tool path and see what that looks like. Uh, it made for 
shorter chips, shorter cuts out here. And the step over is a little bit wider. You notice how they look a little bit further apart. We've got some areas up here that are flat, that are at that 0.1 pocket depth. So the wider the step over, the further apart these chips look. Let's undo last and go in and change that. And let's uh, bring that down to 90 thou. Yeah, I want to bring this up to 1 inch, 1.0. All right, now we'll calculate that. Make them a little bit longer chips. Let's back out to a straight Z view and preview that and see what we have. They're a little bit longer. They're a lot closer together. Made for a much tighter carve. But the downside to that is, again, machining time. Now, you might think that some of these differences are subtle, and they are. But if we look in here now, we don't see any of those large flat areas because I made that step over 90 thou. It basically got in and it carved away most of this. You might have some flat areas up here where the bit didn't actually do any carving, but not many. Personally, I think that's still a little bit busy, although that is a very nice looking texture. I just think it's a little much for this size of a project. So maybe I would use it. Maybe I wouldn't. I don't know. But I do like it. So let me undo last. Go back into my texturing toolpath and let's make some drastic changes here. I want to go 2.5 and let's make these minimum of an inch and a quarter. And uh, let's make the step over. Let's make the step over 0.1. And I'm going to make this 75 thou instead of 50. And we'll calculate that and see what a larger cut looks like. Go back to a straight Z view. Then we'll preview that tool path. And I think that would look better on a large project like this. It still looks a little busy in here because it's this is a smaller area to try to get in and carve, so it's not really able to go down all that deep. But it still looks a heck of a lot better than the other one does, just in my opinion. So I hope this gives you a few ideas, shows you that you can eliminate machining marks in a creative way without getting in here and sanding every little bitty detail. Again, the downside to that is in machining time. But an hour and 52 minutes running a toolpath beats the skippy out of two and a half hours of hand sanding to get rid of a machining mark in a tight area in between letters or on the inside of a letter. So I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, please uh, consider giving me a thumbs up. And don't forget that today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting live Q&A session number 11, where we can dive a little deeper in, into the texturing toolpath or anything else I covered in this video. I know it looks real confusing with all of these numbers and all of these variables, but again, there really is no right or wrong number to enter here. Just get in, experiment, and play. And the easiest project to do is something similar to this. A vector boundary, some text, get into your texture toolpath, and start adjusting numbers. If you come up with something you like, 
remember that you can save that, give it a name, and use it later in another project. So, again, that'll be today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, for live Q&A session number 11 about the texturing toolpath. And that actually gives you a good excuse to subscribe to my channel. And when you subscribe to my channel, click that notification bell right next to the subscribe button. Then you'll get a notification when I post a video and when I go live for a Q&A session. So, I hope to see you this afternoon. And, as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.